In this video, we encrypt a USB stick using almost any computer. Hello everyone, and welcome to TechFix Flicks. In this tutorial, we'll create a fully encrypted USB stick, which can only be accessed using a password. In the previous tutorial in this series, we looked at BitLocker, which, while still highly recommended for its ease of use, suffers from the key flaw that volumes are only writable on Windows Pro, meaning that home users miss out. We therefore turn to third-party utility Veracrypt, which not only works on Windows Home, but additionally offers cross-platform compatibility with non-Windows systems. Heading to the Downloads page, we see options for Windows, including older versions, Mac OS, Linux, and Raspberry Pi. The Windows variants include installer and portable versions, allowing us to use the software without committing to a full installation. We select the installer for Windows 8 and later, clicking the link to begin the download. Once complete, we click to run the installer. Experienced users who wish to skip the installation instructions can jump to the timecode shown on screen now, to be taken directly to the main interface. We immediately encounter a warning that we're installing an app which isn't verified by Microsoft. The application itself is perfectly safe, and there will be many other apps which Microsoft will flag as unverified. We can either take the short-term solution of clicking install anyway, or we can take advantage of the option to change my app recommendation settings. Clicking that option takes us to the Apps and Features dialog, where we click the drop-down to inspect our future installation options. To permanently suppress these warnings, we select Anywhere, thereby allowing apps from all sources to be installed without objection in future. Obviously this is only advisable in instances where anyone sharing your login can be trusted to accurately evaluate the safety of their downloads. User account control may also appear to query the installation, and again, we can take the short term option simply by clicking yes, or we can suppress all further instances by following the steps shown in the tutorial shown on screen now, and linked in the written description accompanying this video. We are then taken to the language selection panel, where there are around 15 available options. We retain English by clicking OK. As ever, acceptance of the license terms is mandatory in order to proceed, and we click I accept the license terms before clicking next. At the screen which follows, we have a secondary opportunity to choose between permanent and portable installations. We can now customise our installation location, should we so wish, by clicking Browse and navigating to a custom path. Alternatively, novice users may simply opt to accept the defaults. We also accept the defaults in the tick boxes, unless you have reason to specifically untick them. Once we click install, the installation process begins, as indicated by the green progress bar in the lower part of the dialog. We receive a message upon completion and click OK to clear it. We can optionally donate to the programmer or simply click to finish. Finally, we are presented with the opportunity to read the user guide. In this instance we decline, but you may well wish to click yes to learn more. From the desktop we can now launch Veracrypt using its icon. We now see the main interface, and insert our USB drive, which triggers a notification from our antivirus utility. We can click File Explorer, where navigating to this PC reveals that the drive has been assigned the letter E, and it will be important to note that letter for later in the process. It's a 64GB drive, of which 58.5GB registers as usable. Clearing that window, we return to the main Veracrypt user interface, and click Create Volume, launching the Volume Creation Wizard. As we're aiming to encrypt a flash drive, we click the radio button next to the middle option to encrypt a non-system partition or drive. Once again, we may need to confirm with user account control by clicking yes. There may be particular instances where the extra safety of a hidden volume is required, and you can select this option here. For most scenarios, the standard encrypted volume will be sufficient. Now we need to specify where we'll create the volume. At this stage, Veracrypt doesn't know which drive we wish to encrypt, so we need to tell it. We click Select Device, and we now see the list of devices attached to our system. Your list may contain many more devices than ours. By far the easiest way to identify the correct device is to match it with the drive letter seen earlier in File Explorer, which in our case was E. By way of confirmation, the drive capacity also matches. We therefore select that device, and click OK. We can now see that the device we selected is confirmed in the drop-down, and click Next to proceed. Our selection at the next dialog is largely dependent upon whether or not there is existing data upon our drive. As our drive is blank, we select the upper option to create an encrypted volume and format it. 
The lower option would be preferable in instances where data is already present. We again click Next. We're quite happy to accept the default encryption algorithms, although this can be changed from the drop down should you so wish. Most users will simply click Next here. Veracrypt detects the size of the device and reports this back to us. We've already observed the size of the drive in File Explorer, so we're happy to confirm by clicking Next. Now we need to enter a password. The application handily offers suggestions for creating a strong password, and we follow them, entering our password in the upper box, then repeating by way of confirmation in the lower box. For passwords of this length and significance, you may wish to use the display password tick box, which will reveal the password you are typing to ensure accuracy. With the password entered, we click Next. The file system allocated by Veracrypt may be optimised for larger files above 4GB in size, and we select Yes here, giving us the flexibility to store them should we need to. By way of context, for a file to be above 4GB in size, it will probably be equivalent to a full length movie file. With our selection made, we click Next. We now need to introduce a degree of randomness to the encryption process, which we achieve by repeatedly moving our mouse pointer in random directions. Note the lower bar transitions from red to yellow to green, and fills all the way to the right as our mouse movements increase. Once filled, we click the Format button, which generates this warning. We click Yes to proceed, and formatting begins. Progress will be indicated both in percentage terms and with a scrolling bar. You should be prepared for a considerable wait here. Our generic 64GB drive took just over 90 minutes for the operation to conclude. We repeated this with a larger but faster 128GB drive, which clocked in at just under 2 hours. We're specifically warned that the drive can no longer be accessed through the physical drive letter assigned to it by Windows, but will instead be mounted via a secondary letter chosen by Veracrypt. We'll see how that works in practice shortly. A further message advises that we've successfully created the encrypted volume. We have the option to create further volumes by clicking Next, or we can leave the creation process by clicking Exit. We are returned to the main interface, which we close. Now that we've prepared the drive, it's time to use it. Let's imagine that we've reinserted the drive some time later. Unlike the first time we inserted it, Windows treats it as unrecognisable, and proposes to format it. This is exactly the behaviour we want, but we certainly don't want to format the drive. We therefore click Cancel. We also close down any additional notifications, such as this one from our antivirus utility. When we click File Explorer, and head to this PC, we can see our USB drive labelled E, but clicking it generates the same error message, which we again cancel, prompting a second error message, which we also acknowledge. So if Windows no longer opens the drive by default, how can we access it? We need to mount it via Veracrypt, so we click to launch it. With the main interface visible, we click Select Device, and the device list again appears. We're aware that our physical drive is mapped to Wii, so we select that option before clicking OK. Now we'll need to select the drive letter used for mounting. We have a free choice of all unused letters, and we select B for backup, then click Mount. Any content stored on the physical but encrypted E drive will be accessible through the mounted and decrypted B drive. We now need to enter our password, and this is simply the one we previously entered via the volume creation wizard. We then click OK. Now we see our physical drive has been mapped to the drive letter B, and it's from there that we'll access our content. Returning to File Explorer, we now have a new local disk B, and we can see that it has 58.5GB free. We can now use this storage space to accommodate any files of our choosing. Note that the physical E drive remains visible to the system, albeit inaccessible. At this point, we can use the B drive exactly as we would any other drive attached to the system, for as long as we need. Once we've transferred files to or from the encrypted volume, we now need to dismount it, again using Veracrypt. With the drive selected, we click Dismount, and the encrypted drive is no longer mounted. We can now close Veracrypt. At this stage, the physical E drive is still attached to the system. We can safely remove it in the usual way, by clicking to show hidden icons, clicking the Devices option, then selecting the option to eject, before physically unplugging the drive. Don't forget to check out our back catalogue, and subscribe for our future projects. Thank you very much for watching this video. 
If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.